Today we're going to be talking about being spiritually minded versus carnally minded. Now, don't don't click out of here. I want you to hear this because I think this is going to be different than anything you've ever heard before. I think one of my gifts and skills is to help show you what does this look like in real life. All right. So let's talk about this real quick. Being carnally minded. Now, as Christians, this is absolutely vital that we understand the difference between between being carnally minded and spiritually minded. And again, tune in for me. Just just focus in here. Lean in for a second. Incline your ear to this because I think that we have a misconception of what this actually means. And if we can dial it in, then we can tap into all that power that God has for us. The great life, the life of blessing that God has laid on the table for us, and we can tap into it if we understand the difference. Welcome to the channel. If it's your first time here, this is the Increase Life with Travis Peters. I want you to head over to financialincrease101.com. There'll be a link in the description. I'm going to show you how to bust out of the budgeted life and truly be able to dominate your financial realm without cutting back, without decreasing, without downsizing. I'm going to show you how to live a big life now and later, all using biblical principles. Financialincrease101.com, my free gift to you is a free guide showing you how to live that life. Now, come hang out with me here. I got some notes. Like this, this is, like I said, if you're new here, this is what we do. We do Bible studies. We got we got Bible stuff. We got computers with our different translations. We got notes from church. We got all these different things going on because I want us to get back to, almost like back to the basics of, man, we just need to be in the Word. Like, yeah, there's, there's a lot of great resources out there, but we also need just some good old Bible. Sometimes, you know what I'm saying? I want to help you guys win. That's what we do on this channel. Now think about being carnally minded. And when we think that way, when we hear that phrase, and it's found in Romans 8, typically we think like evil sin. He's carnally minded. He's lusting. He's looking at stuff on the computer and he's making, uh, you know, he's going after drugs and alcohol and women and in like this crazy, lustful blah, kind of life, he or she. But let's pull back for a second because there's less people like that than you actually think. And if we don't take a look at what this really is, we will, we will just cruise right over a great lesson. There has been many times in the Word where I've read a scripture and thought, that didn't apply to me. And then the Holy Spirit would arrest me and be like, hey, read that again. And I'd go in and I'd study it and I'd be like, oh my goodness, that does apply to me. I thought carnally minded just meant your, like I said, going after crazy women, uh, getting drunk, doing drugs, living this crazy wild party life and you're lustful and you're all these, uh, and like there's flames coming up behind you and that's being carnally minded. No, carnally minded. Here's all this means. You are living by and trusting in your senses. You are allowing your senses to be more real than what God said. This is the mindset that leads to death. Being carnally minded is literally saying, I believe what I see more than what God said. A couple of examples. We know that in 1 Peter 2.24, we know that in Isaiah 53.4 and 5, we know that in Matthew 8.17, all three of those scriptures talk about the prophetic healing that Jesus, Jesus took on those, took that beating, took those stripes, took those wounds so that you may walk in divine health. You go read those scriptures, especially Isaiah 53. Because it's saying that on the same, the same breath where he took your sin, he also took your sickness and infirmity and carried them away on the cross. Well, that's what the word says. Again, it confirms it in 1 Peter 2.24. It confirms it again back in Matthew 8.17. So if you don't know those scriptures, go study them. But that's what the word says. By his stripes, you were healed. 
Well, if I were healed, that means I am healed now. But what if you have symptoms? What if you go to the doctor and they tell you something contrary to what the word says? If you choose to hear the doctor or feel a symptom in your body and say, I guess I'm not healed. I thought I was, but I guess I am not. That's being carnally minded. And the reason carnally minded ends in death is because if you're going to choose to believe everything you feel, see, or hear, you're not going to tap into the faith realm. Because those senses can be opposite of faith. And you have to choose Whose report you will believe? The world's report or God's report? I'll give you another example. The news right now, the headlines right now, the people you follow on social media right now are telling you the economy is bad. They are telling you inflation is going to mess everything up. They are telling you that gas prices are messing everything up, that shortages in supplies and food and all these different things. Are messing everything up and things are going to get worse and things they're, they're saying all this stuff okay but my Bible says in Philippians 419 that my God will meet every single one of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus and the context of Philippians 4 is finances go study it for yourself don't take my word for it don't say Travis that's not true go read it then you can tell me if it's true or not okay but my point is the world is telling you one thing. Your senses, your ears are hearing that financially out there in the world, things are bad. Your eyes are seeing it. These are your senses. You're watching the news. You're reading the headlines on Instagram and Facebook. And it's telling you that your financial situation is probably going to get worse. What are you going to believe? Carnally minded people, and carnally minded Christians, will believe everything they see, read, and hear that comes from the media. The spiritually minded Christian goes to the Word. And the Word says, God will meet your needs no matter what. Isaac 26. I mean, Genesis 26. This is Isaac, Abraham's son. And in times of famine, which they were experiencing, so a bad economy, they would go down to Egypt. Well, this time God said, hey, don't go down to Egypt. Stay here. I want you to sow your seeds and plant your field here. Start your business here. So we had them start a business, because you got to remember, agricultural farmers, all those um, stories in the word, those are entrepreneurs. Those are business owners. That's how this works. A farmer is an entrepreneur. They sow seed, they plant it, take care of it, reap a harvest, and then they have to go sell that food to a market or to a manufacturer or to a distributor. It's all entrepreneurial. So he basically said, hey, Isaac, I want you to start a business here in famine, in a bad down economy. And it said because he obeyed the Lord and because of who his father was, Abraham, we've got those same blessings, Galatians 3.29. Abraham is our father too. Now, he reaped a 100-fold return in the same year that he sown, and it was in famine. Uh, there's a scripture, I believe, in Psalms 27 that says, even in times of famine, God's people will have more than enough. All the principles that come with finances, 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 12, uh, all those ones that, that talk about it, Galatians 6, 7, 8, 9, that talk about sowing and reaping, it... it you have to understand, we're in the kingdom now, guys. We operate in a kingdom. Our kingdom operates independently of what's going on in the world. If you think your success, financial or otherwise, depends on what's happening with who's, in, who's the president, what the economy's doing, gas prices, and inflation, you're carnally minded. You're, you're incorrect. That stuff doesn't matter. I've surrounded myself with kingdom-minded Christians who are making millions of dollars right now. I see it all over the place. I see people succeeding and crushing it. 
when the world is saying things are worse, we're over here saying things are better than ever because we're operating in a kingdom. We are being spiritually minded, not carnally minded. Remember, carnally minded is living by and trusting in your senses. So that's why if I have a symptom in my body, I can tell that symptom, no, you get out of me because by Jesus' stripes, I was healed, therefore I am healed. Here, let me read you the scripture, Mr. Symptom. And then you open your Bible and you turn to that scripture and you read it out loud. Because this is what I believe to be real. Let me read you Colossians 3. Since you, verse 1, since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven. Well, in the realities of heaven, there's no sickness in heaven. There's no poverty. There's no lack. There's only, there's peace. There's abundance. They got streets paved with gold and mansions waiting for you. Set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died to this life, and your real life is hidden in Christ with God. When you set your mind, this, the other translations you've heard before probably, set your mind on things above, not things of this earth. Watching the news sets your mind on things of this earth. I'm telling you guys a little shortcut hack secret. If I could just get you guys to stop watching the news and then like turn the CNN notifications off on your phone, you don't need those. And you don't need to be following people on social media that are always dropping headlines and always want to be that reporter person who's the first to tell you about bad news. You don't need you don't need any of that in your life. I've cut as much out of that as I possibly can. The only times is like something might sneak through on a, a random post or something. But I've stopped following people who post things like that, even close friends and family. We don't watch we haven't watched the news in I don't know, fifteen years, maybe longer. I seem to be doing all right. Look, if I could get you to stop watching this stuff and listening to this stuff and following these people and unfollow the news apps and all that junk, you wouldn't have, you're in a constant fight of faith only because you're watching this stuff. You wouldn't even have to have these faith fights to get yourself out of a place of fear and discouragement. You wouldn't even have to have the fight if you weren't watching these things, listening to these things. And you might have people at your workplace that are always watching the news and they gotta be the person at the water cooler who tells everybody because that gives them some sort of significance. Man, you don't need to hang out with those people or you can shut them down. You can change the subject. You can be the person who controls the conversation. I want you guys to win. I want you guys to stay spiritually minded. In, in order to do that, you have to have this word in you. You have to be reading it. You have to be hearing it. Let me just read a little bit of Romans 8 to you. I think I like the Amplified. I got it here on my computer. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh. But those who are living according to the Spirit set their minds on things of the Spirit, His will and His purpose. Now, actually I'm going to, wrong translation. That's a good one. But the New King James, I like it, where it just says, for to be carnally minded is death. Those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh. Those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on things of the Spirit. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. For the carnal mind is set against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor can it be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but you are in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. So, you are in the Spirit. The Spirit dwells in you. You're a Christian, right? That's Jesus into your heart. All that stuff. You live by the Spirit now. The Spirit of God's in you. It's a great way to live. Again, being carnally minded is death, but being spiritually minded is life and peace. 
man, I've got this personally for 15 plus years. Travis, how are you always happy? How are you always up? How are you always excited? Well, it's because I'm spiritually minded. And I start my day with God. I listen to faith building sermons. I get quiet before him and ask him questions. I journal stuff out that he says to me. I read the word. I listen to uh, our church's sermon from that Sunday or that Wednesday. I get it in me. I listen to it multiple times usually. I'm keeping my mind set on the realities of heaven. If you are looking at it like this, I, I had a blog post that I wrote like a decade ago. It still applies. And then it had a picture of a guy holding two dogs. One was the flesh. One was the spirit. Whichever one you feed more will grow the strongest and the healthiest. And then it will be able to pull and control you which way you're going to go. But almost everybody is feeding their flesh more than they are feeding their spirit. In a practical sense, if you spend more time, and you might track this. I teach a productivity class in one of my programs, and we have a little time tracking exercise that we do. If you were to time track how much time you spend feeding your flesh versus feeding your spirit, I think you would be shocked. And feeding your flesh could simply just be scrolling through mindless stuff on Facebook, watching goofy videos on YouTube, binge watching a Netflix show, reading a romance novel, whatever, uh, having silly conversations with people that don't matter and, and are about stuff we shouldn't be talking about. Feeding your flesh versus feeding your spirit. And then you go and you say, I'm gonna time track, how much time do I work on feeding my spirit? How many faith building podcasts did I listen to? How many tra videos of Travis on YouTube or po his, his podcast did I listen to? How much time at church? How much time actually reading the Bible? How much time praying, praying in the spirit? How much of that did I do? Again, if you were to time track, would feeding your spirit outweigh feeding your flesh? If you spent 51% of your time feeding your spirit and 49% of your time feeding your flesh, you'd win. But I think it's probably more like I spend 96% of my time feeding my flesh and 4% of my time feeding my spirit. I go to You might go to church one day a week. You go Sunday mornings. You go to the early service so you can get in and out. Uh, the, the, the preacher and the sermon and the music, they got it to where it's 23 minutes and it's perfect and it's a complete short little package and then you guys grab your family and you get out of there so that you can enjoy your Sunday. And that's all you do by feed. That's the only way you feed your spirit. 23 minutes once a week. No wonder you're, you're getting your butt kicked. Remember, uh, verse 7, Romans 8, verse 7, no, verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You're not having the life and peace you want because you're feeding your carnal mind. When you get time alone, you don't have to spend it binge watching a show on Netflix or Hulu. You can turn on YouTube you can turn on some preaching. You can turn on some teaching and feed your spirit that way. What if next time you have a few minutes to yourself, you kick your feet up on the couch, you turn on and, and watch your church service's most recent service again? What if you decide to feed your spirit? What would happen if you set your mind on things above? The next time you hear something about gas prices being higher than ever, you go and you open Philippians 4.19 and you say, oh, I'm going to read it out loud to the gas prices. Let them know who's boss and let them know that they can get as high as they want. God will meet my needs no matter what. You can read Proverbs 3 verse 9 and 10 out there if you need some financial help. You can go to financialincrease101.com and get all this covered and knocked out like that. You can join my program Kingdom Money Mastery. Links below and crush all this stuff and just get it behind you and create this life of peace that we talk about. 
the key to your financial success, the key to your marriage success, your parenting success, whatever you're trying to have success in, is to be spiritually minded. The more time you spend in the Word equates to more success in your life. It's just the bottom line. Remember Jeremiah 1, where it talks about how, man, this book of instruction, keep it in your mouth, meditate on it day and night so that you make sure to do what it says. Then you will make your way prosperous. You will deal wisely and have good success. Well, if you looked at your situation, maybe your marriage is in a tough spot. Maybe your kids are in a tough spot. Maybe your money, maybe your business, your finances are in a tough spot. Can you actually say I've been spiritually minded in this situation? Or are you feeding your flesh? Huh? That's just, of course, that's what's happening. That's what they said. The econ economy said that's going to happen. Of course, that's what's happening. Inflation. Of course, that's what's happening. People just don't want to work these days. Oh, man, it's just so hard. To, I mean, I just can't hire anybody. No one wants to work. Everyone wants to, do, you know, like all these things. You're just repeating the news. You're just repeating what carnally minded people are saying. Instead, I go to the word and I keep my mind set on things above. Only way to do that is to have this word in you. What do you need to do today? How can you rearrange your time so you're feeding your spirit? And if you've got a commute, you need to be listening to faith-building messages on your way to work. If you have a lunch break, you need to spend your lunch break feeding your spirit. If you have a drive home, you need to be listening to things on the drive home that build you up and feed your spirit after you put your kids to bed. Man, if you're not getting up early, you need to be waking up before your house wakes up. Don't be waking up because your kids woke you up. You need to get up beforehand and you need to prepare for your battle today. You need to prepare to win. Man, a warrior puts on his armor before the battle, not during it. These are just practical tips to feed your spirit so that you can set your mind on things above. That way when things of the earth come, they don't even phase you. You're living up here. Remember, we're co-heirs with Christ. We are raised with Christ, seated in heavenly places with him. We need to be living up here with him, not down here. We are citizens of heaven. We operate in the kingdom, his government, not down here. We might be in this world, but we are not of this world. We are citizens in heaven. That means we operate by kingdom laws. And the, the economy and all that stuff going on doesn't have to affect you. The doctor's report doesn't have to affect you. Man, I'm telling you guys, this is how you win. I love you. I want you to guys to live the, the best and blessed life that God has set out for you. This is how you do it. These are the practical steps. Let's get after it today. Let's be spiritually minded today. Let's, let's tell the world no. Let's tell the word yes. Get this stuff in you. If you need something practical to listen to, binge watch, binge listen my show. Man, I'm telling you, I'm not trying to be self-promoting, but it's faith building. I know that you can listen to some preaching out there that isn't. And that talks about goofy stuff and weird things and arguments and silly stuff and blah, blah, blah. And you'll listen to preachers who are like, oh yeah, because of my anxiety, I have to operate this way. But man, stop. You will not hear that on this on this podcast, on this show. We don't talk about things like that because Jesus said, be anxious for nothing. Philippians 4 uh, verse 6 says, do not have anxiety about anything. So we don't talk like that. We, we on this show, man, we speak the word and we take, we, we take the New Testament literally. I mean, we talk about the word. I'm not, I got scriptures, multiple scriptures in every single one of these. So if you need something to build your faith, Binge watch my YouTube stuff or just listen to the podcast and get on iTunes and Stitcher and all those things, all the places. Just get this in you. Feed your spirit. Feed your spirit. I love you guys. Let's build this thing up. I want you guys to win. We're raising up an increased army. If you want more, you want to go deeper on this, I got links in the description below. Some of my other products and programs for those who are saying, man, I want the increased life. I want to go all in. I want to win every day. I want to dominate. I don't want to live a life of average mediocrity, then you need to click these links below. You need to come hang out with us and learn the step-by-step -step processes to get there.
I love you guys. Make sure you like and subscribe for the YouTube algorithm. I will see you in the next one.